Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's the how's the weather in your necks of the woods? Kind of hazy. Well, good morning. It's 10 o'clock on July 11th, and thank you so much for joining me for this MSL Learn webinar series update on the certification program. Um, it is great to be at this point of our project to update the certification program and to be able to share with you kind of where we are and opportunities for you to uh, move forward with certification and um, hopefully some of you move forward sooner than you might have thought was possible. Um, this is part of a series of webinars that we're doing on the second Tuesday and last Tuesday of each month. The second Tuesday is about different programs and topics and services, and the last Tuesday is always so wonderfully done by our friend Bobby DeMontney on tiny tech training. So um, we hope that you're enjoying this series. I'm Cole Barto. I'm the Continuing Education Coordinator at the State Library, and so um, I will be hosting and then providing the information for this session. Um, as I said, our agenda, it's pretty simple, straightforward. The certification program updates that were um, put in motion and put in place by the State Library Commission on June 14th of this year. Um, there are some changes that uh, are happening and actually have happened already. Um, some of you who are joining today uh, may have already been the recipient of kind of an accelerated uh, certification issue um, due to these changes being put into place, particularly for library administrators. So the program update uh, that process started almost a year ago with a task force um, and then feedback and, uh, in, and just discussions and information sharing um, leading up to the commission approving these changes in June. So there are some changes to the library administration track. There are changes to the optional staff track. Um, and then actually there were no changes to the optional trustee track. So um, with that, I'll just kind of go into some of the specifics. Again, just encourage you to add any questions that you have to chat so that um, as you have those thoughts and questions, put them there and then I can circle back in, in just a few minutes. So um, one of the things that uh, was part of this process um, that came out of the task force for updating our continuing education and certifica certification program was to really hone in on some clear goals for the program. So that it kind of got winnowed down to these three things that we want to promote continuing education regardless of your role um, and regardless of the, the responsibilities you fill in the library. Um, it's our job at the State Library to promote continuing education. And we want to be able to demonstrate the impact that continuing education has on library services. So as you look at the dashboards on the State Library website, you'll begin to see more and more about um, continuing education and library services as well. We also want to very simply promote recognition for librarians. We know that a commitment to the hours that you take um, to engage in continuing education, whether that's traveling somewhere to a workshop or taking advantage of the many online opportunities, um, that, that effort needs to be recognized. And so in a, at a very basic level, the continuing education and certification program is a way to recognize that effort by tracking credits and to then um, have those credits culminate in a certification or a certificate at the end of a four-year period. So um, in and of itself, the certificate is not the, the end um, of the, um, the kind of the end big thing. It's that you've engaged in learning and have really um, you know, given yourself the opportunity to grow and learn as library professionals, regardless of your background. Um, and then again, the, this last goal, and that really is uh, the goal of the program itself is to provide opportunities. So whether you are a director, staff member, or trustee, 
it's our responsibility at the State Library to um, provide opportunities, whether that's uh, offering courses on our MSL Learn online learning platform, um, the subscriptions that we have with Web Junction, um, and then also the other types of things like this webinar series or in-person workshops like the upcoming fall workshop. We want to be able to provide opportunities that provide meaningful continuing education uh, for for everyone who works with and for uh, and around libraries. So those are the program goals that we're operating from going forward from this point. And with that, um, for library administration, there are now two tracks. So if someone is brand new to library work um, and particularly for library directors who have never been certified before, there's an initial certification track. And it, you'll notice that that is 60 continuing education credits in a four year period that should be familiar to you. But the particulars have changed a little bit. So 30 credits provide an emphasis in library administration. Um, that's the big part of the, the job of the library director. And then 30 elective credits can be earned in any category. So the old system had specific requirements in each of the four categories for continuing education. This really hones in on library administration and then opens up elective credit in any category. Um, so that, that really addressed uh, a need to have flexibility um, and to really look at an individual's needs in learning what they need to learn. Um, in order to um, you know, reflect what the needs of their particular library are. And then the, the other part of this, I think that is really exciting and I've already begun to see um, pretty uh, quick um, attainment of this is a renewal certification. So if you've had a library administration track certificate in the past um, and you've gotten beyond an initial certification, you're gonna be in a renewal track from here on out. And that is 60 elective continuing education credits earned in a four year period. So that really is up to you to design that learning path or that learning plan that you are going to be on in order to keep that certification current. Um, so uh, essentially it takes out a lot of the paperwork um, that might have been part of um, what we used to call the strategic track and just allows you to track those credits, earn those credits, and then attain that certification at the end of four years. So I'm going to pause there and see if there are any questions um, about the changes to library administration track. And feel free if you want to put something in chat or if you want to unmute, I, I'm happy to respond live and in person now. Um, I This is Morgan from the Joliet Library. Um, Good I do, morning. Morning. Um, I have a question and just to clarify. So like, for example, I have not been certified yet um, for my, so I just came on a year, two years ago. Yeah. So do I, um, am I able to switch to that 30-30 or do I have to stick with the old requirements? That is a perfect question. No, you don't have to stick with the old requirements. Um, what, what I actually did as soon as the commission took action on June 14th was anyone who is currently serving as a library director, I adjusted your continuing education tracks and records. Um, so if Morgan, you're a perfect example, and thanks for sharing that. Um, you have now in Aspen an initial certification track that you're working toward. Um, and so I, I was able to do that for all current directors. Um, so those of you who are serving as directors right now, if you've had certification in the past, you're going to see that renewal track in your record now. If you are like Morgan working on an initial certification, you're going to see that track. If you don't and you are a director, please call me or send me an email and, and make sure that I didn't miss something along the way. Other questions?
I'm I'm pretty excited about this. I don't know if some of you are, but I, what the result was, um, and I, I put this out in the newsletters, there were 13 library directors who were immediately able to be certified, whether it was a renewal or completing an initial certification as soon as we put these new um, specifications in place. And so uh, I think it really helped us get to that goal of having flexibility and also making uh, certification less of a barrier to meeting public library standards and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, if you have any more questions about this, don't hesitate to, to ask. Um, but I will go over uh, the transition from the past program, which is kind of you know what we just talked about, but we I, we did make that change. I reviewed everyone's credits, and if you had you know more credits or the right amount of credits, then we went ahead and issued those certificates. So for the staff track, which is optional, um, so staff are not required to be in the certification program or be certified. But for some libraries, it's really important to um, encourage library staff, especially those who didn't go to library school or who are just really enthusiastic about learning more about the profession that, that they're working in. The staff track is really a great way to build those skills with individuals who are, are working in those positions. So the main change is that there are more elective credits available and fewer requirements in each of the categories. There are, however, still those five credit requirements in each of the four categories. And really the thinking from our, our task force and, and through discussion with our various advisory groups, um, when we are looking at a well-rounded employee, it was still really important to um, ask people to have you know kind of, kind of dabble in these other areas that are um, potentially related to the job that they're in right now, but may actually help them grow into a, a position that requires knowledge in, in these other categories. So flexibility, absolutely, um, especially with the majority of the credits being elective credits in any category, and then those basic five credit requirements in each of the categories so that we get that well-rounded learning experience. Um, so I'll, I'll pause there and see if there are any questions about the library staff track changes. give it a little wait time here. Um, but in, like I said, don't hesitate, throw those questions in chat and um, as they occur to you, and I can come back to those too. Um, I think, you know, when I look at the program goals, this track, it is optional. Um, and it is something that we hope can be a way to really um, promote continuing education as a, a practice and a value for for the people who are working in libraries. This is here, um, especially for those of you who might be supervisors, not necessarily a director, um, to help uh, create a learning pathway for your staff um, so that they can you know, grow as professionals. It's our hope that you know, it's not just um, a way to recognize the effort, but like I said, to promote the value of continuing education uh, within our profession. Okay, so um, I mentioned earlier, and, and I don't have a slide specifically on the trustee track because those um, those parameters didn't change. And trustee certification is always optional for individual trustees. Um, but I do want to say, especially for those of you who are in a staff track, to please check your Aspen record because when we implemented the five credit, five credit, five credit, five credit, and the 40 electives, that bumped a lot of people a lot closer to finishing their certification. So the encouragement is to check Aspen, check your certification record, um, and you might be excitingly close to being able to get that certificate wrapped up. 
We have lots of resources. We have the um, website is updated for the continuing education and certification program. Um, there is a new certification handbook, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Aspen, as always, is the place where you record your credits, um, enroll in or, or register for MSL and MLA sponsored activities. Um, and then you always have at your fingertips um, email, give us a call, your friendly MSL consultants, um, Pam Henley, Suzanne Reimer, Tracy Cook, and then myself are always, you know, ready and available to talk through any questions that you might have, or even to think about um, what a continuing education plan might look like. So don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, I am going to show you really quick uh, what the new certification page looks like. Um, when you go to that page, you'll see the about the certification program is that first area, and then we've broken it down into library directors, trustee track, staff track, how to apply, um, and other information. So uh, this page is completely updated with all of the new program information, and um, it, it's a good place to start, especially if you're wanting to encourage a staff member to look into certification as well. Um, once you open up that about the certification program, you will see the link to download the um, handbook. Um, just got that posted uh, last week, week before, um, but that's where you can see those goals and then access the handbook itself. I'm gonna throw a link into the chat here for that handbook. So those of you who just can't help yourselves and want to just read that thing cover to cover, there's the link to the handbook. Um, and then I'll also put the link to that certification page here in the chat. Um, take a look at that. And then um, I'm going to put a link. All of you I know have Aspen bookmarked and you just visit there frequently. But I did want to just kind of reiterate that continuing education credits, you know, we, we log those, we track those in Aspen. That's our tool to that, to do that. And one of the, the um, I think, big recommendations and something that I heard from multiple individuals over the course of, of thinking about changes to the program is what are those continuing education credits? And the basic definition really hasn't changed a lot but training that's presented as a structured learning opportunity is eligible for continuing education credits. Um, and what we've done is to think about, you know, how do we expand what a structure means um, so that it isn't just a class or a workshop or, you know, watching a YouTube video. Um, a structure can also be a continuing education plan. And so I've provided a couple months ago, a short um, MSL Learn webinar series session on continuing education plans. And there are resources in that new handbook for setting that up. But a structure can also be a plan. And so that I think that really does open up more opportunities for you to decide what goes into that structure. Um, and that's more of a conversation between you um, as a director and your board of trustees about the plan that you need to have in place for growth as a professional and the same for staff. Um, it's, it's a way to look at things beyond some of the more traditional uh, ideas that we've had or kind of structures that we've had to, um, to work with in the past. This is, uh, this is a big change, actually. It's pretty simple on this slide, but um, as you begin to think about what do my elective credits look like as I am working towards certification, this is where the door really opens to different types of learning, um, uh, book studies or uh, other college coursework or other types of courses that might come out of your local government or other providers. Uh, there are just a lot of opportunities because you're creating the plan that is the structure for continuing education credits. Um, the you know the the basic one hour um, equals one credit that remains in place, and so that's a way for us to kind of organize and decide how many credits something is worth. 
But um, as always, um, you know, go to Aspen if you're creating independent learning events, log in, go to the continuing education control panel, um, and you can um, both, you know, select and add new tracks. Those four tracks um, that I've talked about are, are in Aspen now, but then also, um, you know, adding those independent learning events that uh, can be more than just the events that you register for in Aspen, um, watching the recordings and that sort of thing. So with that, I've kind of buzzed through a little bit and hopefully this gives you some food for thought. Hopefully you'd like to dive more into the handbook um, and the certification page, but I really do want to um, give you a chance to give your thoughts and ask any questions at this point as well. Coley, this is Desiree from Missoula Public Library. I've got a couple questions. Yes. Um, do, you, do you have a preference about a renewal? Do you prefer that people renew when they've achieved the required credits? Or do you prefer them to wait until the end of their four-year period? Or do you care? Um, it's really up to you. If you're ready and your credits can be submitted, then let, by all means, let's go ahead and do that. And especially when we have kind of a transition time with folks who have been working on a library administration track or another track, um, and definitely I, I'm willing and want to work kind of one-on-one -on -one as there is this transition between the old system and, and the new system. So if, if you have the credits and just submit them and that will kick everything into, into gear to get it cert the certificate issued. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then I saw in the handbook, there was something about being able to claim credits for supervising practicum students. Do you mind talking yeah. a little bit more about that? Sure. And, and that's something that's actually been in place since the uh, original um, certification program started. So if you have a student who is um, in the school library program at either U of M or at MSU, those students have to do a practicum. So they must work in a library for a certain number of hours. And what the handbook describes is the credit that a supervisor, um, and that doesn't have to be a director, um, it, it can be whoever is assigned the, the responsibility of helping that practicum student complete their hours and the activities that they need to do. So that is another way to, um, to get a lot of credits um, for supervising a library media practicum student in your library. Great. Thank you. I just want to say that this this update is really nice. I was in the strategic pathway pilot, and um, yeah. I think this is a really nice blend of that program along with the traditional certification. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm glad to hear that. Other questions? I know there's always a thousand that come up after um, we, we uh, kind of wrap up and finish. Um, I'll just say really quickly, the recording for our session this morning will be posted in the YouTube channel uh, a little bit later today. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, there are tons of, of things, uh, both topical um, and also, uh, you know, growing number of videos also from our natural heritage program, the other parts of the state library. So a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, you can always you know, find out more if you aren't subscribed to the continuing education newsletter. I um, advise you, beg you, would hope that you would do that, um, send that out once a month and then with news flashes kind of as new things come up during the course of the month. Uh, it's a good way to, to stay up to date on what's happening with continuing education and there are other newsletters. Um, the other thing is here is a survey. We always love to hear from you and have and really appreciate your feedback um, on these sessions. If you wouldn't mind filling out a really quick survey, the uh, evaluation form link is in the chat right now, or you can snap your QR code and go right there. Um, but even more importantly, 
I do really encourage you to send me an email or, or give me a call um, as you work through and, and look at your continuing education record. If you have a question, um, like Desiree was saying, if if you're um, if it looks like you're ready to submit, um, don't hesitate to uh, just reach out to me. I'm always happy to do a review and, and help you through those next steps, especially um, if you're choosing a different track or if we need to have a different track in place. So I'm very happy to work with you on that. With that, I, I'm um, open to more questions or if um, there aren't any, I am certainly happy to give you back five minutes of your time today. I know there are a number of other uh, meetings going on at the same time today. I was just wondering how you have the MSL learn um, where you have some different classes that you can take. Um, how do you get there? Oh, to those classes. That is a great question. Let's see. Make sure you can still see my screen. So MSL Learn um, is it's actually linked from. Let's see here. So if you go to the state library page and go to continuing education or the certification program page, either one, there is a link here, or I'll drop this link in the chat. You can go here. You use the same login that you do when you log into Aspen, so your Okta credentials, and then you can enroll in courses. There are a number in library administration, service, library services to the public, um, technology, and those are online courses. Uh, they are um, listed in the independent learning dropdown in Aspen. Um, and so those are just online courses. They are self-paced. So you can start and stop them at almost any time. Um, we do have one unique uh, thing in technology. You are running a Microsoft Excel cohort, which starts in July and kind of ends up in September. Um, that's the only one that's really time bound, but really it's self-paced courses. And especially in library administration, um, that's a category where we have an overview of the state library. Um, and we're building a series of courses. They're called trustee essentials, but we have one on understanding local government um, and then we have another one on the responsibilities of trustees, um, working on finishing up a budgeting course with Tracy Cook that will appear here next. Um, so those courses, I think, even though they're under the umbrella of trustee essentials, they're good for directors. They're good for anyone who really wants to understand uh, libraries in Montana. Um, so that's just kind of a, a quick overview of. MSL Learn. Great, thank you. You are so welcome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. And like I said, I'll have the recording up a little bit later this afternoon. And with that, I hope you all have a great and wonderful day.